Yes, welcome everybody to Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Claire. It's June 10th, 2019. The show, as always, is presented by the Marijuana Times. Check us out at marijuanatimes.org. Click the video tab there to find this show. There's a lot of great articles there as well. Great writers, social media links, and more. Marijuanatimes.org. Go check it out today. Talking about what went down at the FDA's CBD hearing late last month. Also, the viral story about a man who was busted with 42 pounds of marijuana chocolate, a cancer survivor, a cancer victim, a cancer sufferer, however you want to put it. And when will federal marijuana legalization come? Well, former congressman has a prediction on that. All that's coming up. First, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Make sure you grow safe and poison-free. Don't use banned pesticides. Be regulatory compliant in the state that you're growing in. All of these things can be accomplished with NatureSide, nature-side.com. Proud sponsor of Cannabis News. They're awesome. Go check them out. It's first story by yours truly. At MarijuanaTimes.org, what went down in the FDA's CBD hearing? We talked about this a couple times over the course of the last couple of weeks, the end of last month, the FDA had a hearing about CBD to get some feedback from the public, from experts, from the community, the industry, etc. Over 100 people testified in an all-day hearing. Um, in his opening remarks, FDA Commissioner Ned Sharpless said, quote, there are real risks associated with THC and CBD, and critical questions remain about the safety of their widespread use in foods and dietary supplements. While we have seen an explosion of interest in products containing CBD, there is still much that we don't know. What if someone applies a topical CBD lotion, consumes a CBD beverage or candy, or consumes some CBD oil? How much is too much is the wondering of the FDA commissioner. As I said, there was over 100 speakers. One of them was Jonathan Miller, who's the general counsel for the U.S. Hemp Roundtable. He had talked to the Marijuana Times. He said, quote, our main focus is trying to remove this cloud over this industry as it grows in skyrocketing fashion. Uh, he said the FDA's current stance is the CBD is not legal for use as a dietary supplement or a food additive. That's created a lot of confusion in the marketplace. Uh, Jonathan and the U.S. Hemp Roundtable and a lot of other industry people would like the FDA to clarify this issue. What form that clarification comes in, whether it comes in just a clarification and maybe some regulation or and it comes in the form of many heavy-handed restrictive regulations remains to be seen. I tend toward the latter, but you all know me and my, uh, my faith in the way the government is going to get things done and how they're going to do things. So do not be surprised if the FDA becomes very involved in CBD and decides they really need to regulate it to, you know, for the good of everyone in order to clear up any confusion they're really just going to slap regulations in every aspect and everything they can think of and plan for every contingency, much the way uh, legal marijuana is being handled in many states. This next story from ChicagoTribune.com. <clears throat> You've probably seen it. It's gone viral over the weekend. Man who bought 42 pounds of marijuana infused chocolates to medicate his cancer, sentenced to four years in prison. A Montgomery man who ordered a 42-pound bag of marijuana infused chocolates to self-medicate as he battled cancer, was sentenced to four years in prison. Thomas J. Franzen, 37, pled guilty to a reduced charge of possession of more than 5,000 grams of cannabis. That's a lot of cannabis. A felony that carries a prison term of four to 14 years, according to King County Court records. Prosecutors dismissed more severe charges of cannabis trafficking after he was charged in February 2014, when authorities intercepted a shipment of 430 individually full foil-wrapped THC-infused chocolate bars that were delivered to his home from California from a California medical marijuana dispensary. Franz's attorney, David Kamick, said the judge was compassionate and kind when sentencing Franz. And, oh, it's nice. He was very relieved he had the case over. Kamick said the judge was cognizant of his health and wanted to give him a break. But ultimately, 40 pounds of cannabis is a large amount. Look, I'm not going to say that this guy deserves special dispensation because he has cancer. And then, well, he should get a pass for having 42 pounds of marijuana, you know, against the law, blah, blah, blah. Anyone should have the right to buy 42 pounds of marijuana chocolate if they feel so. It's not a criminal act. It shouldn't be treated as a criminal act. It doesn't matter what the reason is. But having said that, this guy is a prime example of the way the government will treat you. For something that shouldn't be a crime. Not only do they consider it a crime, 
They don't care. They don't care what your problem is. You got cancer? Too bad. Too bad. You, you had uh, bought 42 pounds of medicated chocolates, which had to cost an extreme amount of money. I mean, that's, that's a big order of chocolates. It doesn't say, you know, where he got the money to pay for it or any of that in the story. But, um, I mean, that's 42 pounds of marijuana and a few chocolate. Can't be cheap. In any case, this shows you that the government, the way the government treats something that shouldn't be a crime for a guy who has cancer. He got 42 pounds of chocolate. That should be the end of it. He's decided to use marijuana to treat his cancer. That should be the whole end, the end of the whole story. But no, all these other people are involved because the government's involved in this when they shouldn't be. Now this guy, uh, I mean, you can imagine the kind of cancer treatment he's going to get in the prison system. I'm sure it's very robust, you know, because a uh, government... Healthcare in the United States is known for being you know, well run. You look at the Veterans Administration and things of that nature and the prison system, they're they're on it. They're on it. I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure it's great. You get top notch cancer care uh, from the government. It's the last story from TMZ.com. The US will legalize it by twenty twenty two. Trump's in, says ex representative Rohrbacher, uh, federal marijuana legalization. It's just around the corner and the trail to legal weed will be blazed by President Trump. So says former US rep Dana. Rohrbacher, uh, you may remember him from uh, Congress, very big champion of medical marijuana, uh, sponsored a lot of marijuana legislation, amendments, and the like. Uh, Rohrbacher said 2022 is going to be the magic year for chronic lovers, and he served 30 years on the Hill, as TMZ points out. He's also close to President Trump. He's kind of embroiled in the Russia thing, whatever that turned out to be or will turn out to be or didn't turn out to be, depending on you know the perspective you have on President Trump himself. Um, the longtime Republican congressman from SoCal was on TMZ Live to talk about cannabis. He's now invested in the weed industry. He says his former cohorts on Capitol Hill are already working on legislation to allow all Americans to toke legally. There is legislation being worked on uh, when that will come to the fore, when that will come to pass. If it's 2022, if it's Trump that signs that into law, a lot remains to be seen. But Rebacher does have some insight into this issue. But in the end, you know, it's just a prediction like every other prediction. I mean, weatherman have a lot of insight into the weather, and we see how good their predictions go. So expertise will only get you so far when it comes to predicting the future. There's a lot of unknowns, a lot of variables. 2022 seems a long way off, but if if marijuana is legalized on the federal level by 2022, or at least descheduled, then, I mean, I think that's that's a pretty good pace, considering, you know, it's considering where we're at with the political landscape the way it is and most politicians focused on, you know, Democrats focused on killing Trump, Trump focused on killing Democrats, so on and so forth, you know, metaphorically uh, speaking, figuratively speaking, killing each other, killing each other's careers, trying to destroy each other's political careers, trying to get Trump out of office, so on and so forth. If they can carve out just a little bit of time and focus for marijuana, that would be super, that'd be super duper if you all, <laughs> be super duper if you all could just a little bit of time for marijuana. It would be awesome. And you don't have to do much. Just deschedule it at a federal level and get it out of the way. And you're done. You're done. Clear up all the banking issues and the tax issues, all that stuff. And you're done. We'll never bring it up again. You never hear from us again. We'll be fine. We'll go back to the States, we'll buy our legal weed, you know, invest our legal weed businesses. It'll be hunky dory, as they say. Thanks, everybody. Start of a new week here at the Marijuana Times. Make sure you check us out on YouTube and Vimeo. Search the Marijuana Times. Also on Apple Podcasts for the audio-only version of the show. We are coming up on episode 420 at the end of the week. It's a celebration all week long as we count down to episode 420. Check us out at MarijuanaTimes.org. Thank you to NatureSide, Nature-Side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Thank you all for watching and listening today. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. (laughs) 